It's now time for members' statements. A member from York Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This past Sunday, I had the honour to attend the Bomber Command Bar Awards of the Royal Canadian Air Force Georgian Wing 429, meeting in Pefferlaw. Today, I would like to again congratulate the seven veterans and their families who received the award. Larry Manell, Frank Ferguson, Owen Slingerland, Art Westgarth, Lloyd Bell, Hilliard Dean, and Ab Wallace. The Bomber Command Bar recognizes commitment and bravery in the face of some of the most difficult odds of the Second World War. Despite great risk, thousands volunteered. Almost half of all air crew never made it to the end of their tour. I thank the Georgian Wing 429 for allowing me to be a part of this special and meaningful ceremony. We are grateful for the service of these veterans, and we will always remember and honour their courage and sacrifice. Thank you. Do I uh, take a moment to apologize to the member? I keep saying it, it's York Simcoe, not York Centre. I apologize. The member from uh, Windsor, Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to take a minute today to say goodbye to two of our NDP staff who are in the gallery today. Margo Duncan. Uh, started here back in 2002 with Michael Prue. She then worked for Paul Ferreira when he was elected. And for the past seven years, Speaker, she's put up with the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek, Paul Miller. <laughs> I, can say, I can say that, Speaker, because Mr. Miller is away this week. Uh, he's walking one of his daughters down the aisle and calling us every day to see what he's missing and to make sure to give us advice on how to hold the government to account. So I'm trying to one-up him while he's away by jumping in front of the line to say the first public farewell to Margot. She has four grandsons ranging in age from seven weeks to 13 years and they will become her priority in the weeks, months and years ahead. So Speaker, I also want to pay tribute today to the best legislative assistant I've ever had. Okay, he's the only one I've ever had. But Denny Tim is leaving at the end of the week for a much better paying job at the town of Ajax. An amazing opportunity for him. And Denny's career path has always been in the municipal sector. I've known him since he was a kid. I convinced him to put his career on hold for a year to help me set up my office here at Queen's Park and put in place a filing and protocol system that even I have, could understand, and he's done an outstanding job. Denny is a former chair of the Windsor's Youth Committee, Youth Advisory Committee at the City of Windsor, a former board member at Transit Windsor, and at the Windsor Public Library. I hired him away from the City of Thunder Bay, where he was a management intern, and I know the town of Ajax will benefit from his enthusiasm his energy and his knowledge, and the experience he gained, Speaker, from working here within the provincial legislative system. To both, I say, I'm sorry to see you go. Happy trails, and please stay in touch. Thank you. <laughs> you notice I did give you some extra time because of the uh, Hamilton East Stony Creek reference. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, I, I, I do have his back, so leave him alone. He's a nice guy. <laughs> member statements, the member from uh, Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as MPPs, we're all here to serve our respective communities, but I today would like to highlight the work of a, of a group of parents who are doing a wonderful job of serving my community of Etobicoke Centre. This earlier this fall, Mr. Speaker, actually, this I was able to attend a first. I was get a, I got a first-hand look at the power of community organizing by attending the Silver Creek Park Rejuvenation Project Family Fund Day, organized by a dedicated group of parents in Etobicoke Centre. Silver Creek Park is located in the heart of my riding, between Kipling and Islington, north of Eglinton, and like many parks provides an important gathering place for families and their children, promotes health and wellness, and provides an accessible leisure space for people of all incomes. The park is adjacent to a community pool, a baseball diamond, a tennis court, a soccer field, and of course the Etobicoke Children's Centre for Mental Health. Very important park. Unfortunately, the play structures need to be renewed and made safer, and the park would benefit from paths, benches, and landscaping. A group of parents formed the Silver Creek Rejuvenation Committee to raise the money needed to do those improvements, and they've successfully raised almost $120,000 already, Mr. Speaker. Anyone interested in supporting the cause can go to silvercreekpark.ca. 
The committee was formed by members of the local neighbourhood who, despite busy schedules, continue to volunteer their free time for this important cause. I'd like to thank them for their hard work. I'd like to congratulate them for, for hard work and all they've done for the community. And um, these families reflect the best of what our province has to offer, a collaborative spirit that produces revol results for all of our benefit, and particularly in this case for Etobicoke Centre. I look forward to supporting the committee. I wish the committee and other project, project volunteers the very best as they work towards their goal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Simmons, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I want to share excerpts from a letter written by Mr. Ted Whitworth, who has been well served by my seatmate and colleague, the member from Dufferin Caledon. But enough is enough, Speaker, and I think people in this House need to hear what he is actually experiencing. And it goes like this. We have lived beside the Amaranth Transformer Station for almost nine years and have had our family, our farm and our lives ruined. We have asked for help and have been promised many times by the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change that they were going to take action, but now they say what is happening to us is not their responsibility. This ministry has met with us many times but have not carried out the promises made to us. We have reported our issues to the Spill Centre over 200 times with no results. How many times should we re re be reporting issues before we can expect something to be done? Our house is by MOEC measurement 490 metres from the transformer station. Our fence line where our cattle are is about 150 metres. Our livestock suffers with regards to milk production and conception, and we suffer as well. Our doctor, a former medical officer of health, says we should not live in our house. MOEC would not look at the, his letter for a year and a half. Speaker, enough is enough. I stand here today on behalf of the Whitworths, Whitworths and I will make this pledge to them. I'll be following up with a letter to both the Premier and the Minister of Environment and Climate Change to request a response to the inquiries put forth multiple times over the past few years by the Whitworths. This is a life-altering issue, and this government must address it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Stevens, the member for Bramley-Gormolton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've, ri I've, risen, I've risen in the House previously to mention this issue, and I'd like to raise this issue once again. The Peel region has seen some of the most rapid growth in the entire province. Currently, there's 1.3 million people that live in the Peel region. This is 11 percent of the population of Ontario. 27,000 new residents each year make the region of Peel their home. However, the funding formulas have not changed to keep up with this high growth area. The funding formula does not take into consideration the fact that the Peel region has grown so astronomically, particularly when compared with other regions around the province. This government has done very little to address this problem. This is a serious issue. It impacts people not only in health care, not only in children's issues and then the education sector, but all sectors where funding is a matter in the Peel region. For example, the Toronto has 32 community health centres, which are phenomenal places of care. Windsor and London have six. The Peel region has only three. Community legal clinics. Peel is a region that is so understaffed and underserviced when it comes to community legal services. They have 16 staff compared to Toronto, which has 109. Peel residents deserve access to justice. This is a serious issue. If you look at housing, 12,600 families are waiting for affordable housing. Daycare, there's a recent study by the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives which has found that daycare is the least expensive in Brampton. We need this government to take action on a fair share for Peel. Thank you. Member Statement, the member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I rise in this House to congratulate Colleges of Ontario on yet another successful college day held here in the legislature yesterday, November 25th. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure the members um, like the uh, Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, were left with fond memories of delicious, delicious samples of food that students prepare for us. But, Mr. Speaker, what we really ought to recognize is the important role that colleges play in preparing students with the necessary skills for jobs in today's global economy. Mr. Speaker, I know our Premier and the Minister for Training College and University, the, the Honourable Reza Moretti, recognize this important role that the colleges play. They are indeed key contributors to their local economy, building communities and their people from the ground up. Congratulations to all 24 members of the association, to Linda Franklin and their chair, David Agnew, on a successful day. I look forward to working with them 
to continue building a better, more prosperous, and more competitive Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Two history teachers from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound were bestowed on November 3rd, the 2014 History Award for Excellence in Teaching by His Excellency the Right Honourable David Johnson, the Governor General of Canada. David Alexander and Ryan McManaman from the Owen Sound Collegiate and Vocational Institute won this prestigious prize after taking a unique and exciting approach to teaching their students about the First and Second World Wars. Messrs. Alexander and McManaman brought history to life when they assigned their students individual profiles of Canadian soldiers who died in the World Wars, some of them whom themselves were OSCVI students at one time. The students researched and studied a treasure trove of letters written to former OSCVI student Minnie Wright by soldiers who served and sacrificed during the Great War. The students also researched 54 Canadian servicemen who were killed on June 6, 1944, particularly those from the Owen Sound area. A final highlight came when a Canadian Forces CC-130 Hercules from RCAF 424 Squadron made a memorial flyover of the school after students researched the lives of two former students who died tragically together while serving in the same Lancaster air crew. The result of these clever projects, entitled War and Memory Legacy Project, is a permanent collection of information that future students can learn from and add to. I would also like to recognize Holly Berner of Meaford, who was recently recognized for her project entitled Aboriginal Heroes, Influencing Our Youth by the Government of Canada History Awards. These awards are Canada's top honours in the field of history and heritage. The OSCVI and Georgian Bay Secondary School are tremendously fortunate to have these exceptional teachers who are not only passionate about their subject, but who also work diligently to challenge and inspire their students. I want to commend Messrs. Alexander and McManaman and Ms. Berner for showing a true commitment, love and dedication to teaching and wish them the best in the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to say a few words about the passing of the big Irishman, Pat Quinn. As you know, Mr. Speaker, uh, Pat passed away uh, this week after an incredible career. I remember I first saw him when I was at St. Mike's as a student, and he was playing for the Hamilton Tiger Cubs. It was a long time ago. But Pat has been an incredible success as a he's been a lawyer, he's got a law degree. Uh, he's been a general manager, you know, with Vancouver. He's coached with Edmonton, Philadelphia Flyers, and with the Leafs. He's one of the best coaches we've ever had, and we used to win when Pat was here in Toronto. And you know about Pat? He uh, was always respected by all his players, all his uh, fellow professionals. He always had his heart in the right place. He was a man of great strength. And although Bobby Orr doesn't have too many good memories about that hit, we remember that hit. But anyways, uh, Pat was a, an incredible role model for everybody in hockey. And uh, you know, the thing that uh, we remember most about Pat is he led Canada to the uh, gold medal in uh, Salt Lake City in 2002. First time we won that gold medal for 50 years, Pat was the leader of that team uh, in Salt Lake City. And the last thing I'll say about Pat, shows what kind of a guy he was, the only time people have ever seen him cry in public is when in Salt Lake City, the uh, Canadian women's hockey team won the gold medal and beat the Americans in that game. Pat was shedding tears of joy for the great Canadian women's hockey team. So we say to Pat, I hope uh, you're in heaven a half hour before the devil knew you were dead. Thank you. <laughs> member Statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to take uh, this moment to discuss a very important health care issue that most of us rarely think about organ and tissue donation. But first, I'd like to recognize again, we have Ronnie Gavsey and Adam Lem in the, in the gallery. They're with the Trillium Gift of Life Network, and the Trillium Gift of Life Network plans, promotes, coordinates, and supports organ and tissue donation and transplants across Ontario. Its mission is to save and enhance lives through the gift of organ and tissue donation and transplants. Now, most of us are lucky enough, Mr. Speaker, not to have to think about it. However, for over for over 1,500 Ontarians currently waiting for a life-saving organ transplant, this is, issue is a daily reality, and many of them live right here in Toronto. It's astounding to think that a single person who dies prematurely can save the lives of up to eight people through the gift of organ and donation and significantly enhance the lives of 75 others through tissue donation. Yet despite these life-saving benefits, the recipients, most Torontonians, are not answering the call. Province-wide, about 26 of Ontarians have signed up for the Trillium Gift of Network, but only 17% of Toronto residents. Now, I'm proud to share and say that in Beaches, East York, we're at the leading edge of the GTA, with about 25% of our residents having signed up. But that number is not enough. 
The fact is that there is a chronic shortage and it needs to be addressed. So people can go on, if they're 16 years of age, go on to the website, beadonor.ca, sign up. I'm going to, I've done it, and I hope you all do too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements, and it's now.